In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, may the peace and blessings of Allah the Exalted be upon the Prophet Muhammad and his purified progeny, and may the damnation of Allah be upon their enemies. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to episode 6 where we will continue our discussion about the exaggerator by the name of Bayan bin Sam'an, and this particular exaggerator claimed divinity for the Imams alayhim as -salam. and from the curse of Imam Baqir alayhi salam, the curse that he put on this individual bayan um, and said that كَانَ يَكْذِبَ عَلَىٰ أَبِي He used to lie on my father يعني, um, Imam Zainul al Abidin alayhi salam, the fourth Imam we get the picture that this bayan believed that Imam Zainul al Abidin alayhi salam was God, the earth God and we showed how bayan also misinterpreted the Quran and did tafsir bir ra'i where he said that there is a God on the earth and um, a God of the heavens and a God of the earth. And some scholars have also been quoted as saying that Bayan believed in a type of ittihad, the concept that I mentioned where this divine particle being Allah united with the body of Imam Ali alayhi salam. And there's actually quite a useful article that one uh, brother wrote on this as well about the hulat according to some of the sources. Um, and we find within the ahadith from my readings as well, I read about this character Bayan and of course that his ideas spread as we mentioned. So we said that calling the Imams alayhim islam gods was something that they directly condemned and they cursed such a belief and therefore the clip of that Mu'ammam, I don't know the name of him, the one um, who gave the speech and said Hussein um, Khuda Zahirast, that he is a Zahir type of God, apparent type of God, would correspond to these type of um, exaggerating ghulu beliefs which were in the times of the Imams and the Imams alayhim salam refute them. We showed the narrations just to have a brief recap before we go into the last narration about this um, character Bayan and his beliefs. We find that um, of course firstly Bayan was cursed by Imam Baqir alayhi salam, the fifth Imam. We found that Hisham bin Hakam presented the beliefs to Imam Sadiq alayhi salam about this character Bayan and then of course Imam Sadiq alayhi salam uh, refuted him on this or spoke against these beliefs and disassociated himself. Um, we saw the narration as well where the Imam says that a group of people in the أَنَّكُمْ آلِهَا that a group of people are calling you gods which showed that this belief spread and now we read about when an atheist also used this type of thinking and um, these types of beliefs of Bayan to Hisham bin Hakam in a debate. So let us just go to the source. So now we go to the narration where Hisham bin Hakam describes this individual Abu Shakir ad daysani Now if you may, you may be familiar with this person's name when you read some of the narrations. He was someone who was not a Muslim. He was a Zindiq and he was an atheist. And he basically repeated this type of shubha and belief to Hisham bin Hakam, it seems, in a discussion. So during Hajj, Hisham bin Hakam asked Imam Sadiq alayhi salam again about the verse 84 of chapter 43 of the Quran, where it speaks about the God of the earth and the God of the heavens. So why would Abu Shakir Daysani be repeating this? It's not necessarily that he believed in such a belief. We find that atheists these days and some people who are into polemics, what they'll do is they'll come along with a particular verse and then they will start to create doubts while themselves not believing in this verse. So Abu Shakir ad daysani he just wanted to create doubts and use this verse to negate Tawheed, to negate the belief of Islam, the belief of the Muslims that Allah Azza wa is one and that Allah is not like his creation and that God is only one. Abu Shakir ad daysani this Zindiq, this heretic atheist, who always used to put forth these types of doubts, just wanted to debate Hisham bin Hakam and bring this verse to try and confuse him and negate the concept of the oneness of Allah Azza wa It doesn't necessarily mean that he believed in this. So what we find is that Hisham bin Hakam, he says that Abu Shakir al daysani has said, in the Quran there is a verse that says what we say. I asked what is that? He replied, it is God who is the Lord of the heavens and is the Lord of the earth. He is all wise and all knowing. 
I did not know the answer. During Hajj, I mentioned it to Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. So Hisham bin Hakam, he comes to Imam Sadiq alayhi salam and he mentions this particular argument that Abu Shakir al-Daysani was using. And as we know, where did this argument originate from? It originated from Bayan. So Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, whilst responding to Abu Shakir al-Daysani, also refutes Bayan in the same narration and refutes his belief where he tries to say that there are two separate gods. So Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, فَقَالَ هَذَا كَلَامُ زِنْدِيقٍ خَبِيثٍ إِذَا رَجَعْتَ إِلَيْهِ فَقُلْ لَهُ مَسْمُكْ بِالْكُوفَةِ فَإِنَّهُ يَقُولْ فُلَانٌ فَقُلْ لَهُ مَسْمُكْ بِالْبَصْرَةِ فَإِنَّهُ يَقُولْ فُلَانٌ فَقُلْ كَذَلِكَ اللَّهُ رَبُّنَا فِي السَّمَاءِ إِلَاهٌ وَفِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَاهٌ وَفِي الْبِحَارِ إِلَاهٌ so, etc. Um, what it says here is that Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says that this is the statement of a wicked atheist, a zindik khabith. This is how Imam Sadiq alayhi salam described this statement and the person who uttered this statement, which was Abu Shakir al Daysani. So, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam in this narration he says that this is a statement of a wicked, um, a khabith. Zindiq, someone for example who doesn't have any belief they are like atheists or an atheist who completely denies the existence of Allah Azza wa Jal. And he gives this statement to the person who said this of course referring to Abu Shakir at daysani But this belief was spread of course by Bayan and this type of distortion of the verse's meaning was spread by Bayan and his followers of this sect. So Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he is what? Refuting. He is refuting um, Abu Shakir al-Daysani, but this statement would also refer, um, the Zindiq Khabith, it would refer to Bayan who also propagated these beliefs because Abu Shakir al-Daysani was merely propagating and creating doubts of that which was spread by Bayan, one of the exaggerators from the Ghulat. So Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he replied to him, during Hajj, he replied to Hisham bin Hakam, this is a statement of a wicked atheist. This is a statement of a wicked atheist. When you go back to him, say to him, what is your name in Basra? He will say so and so. Say in the same, um, what is your name in Kufa? So ask him, what is your name in Kufa? He will say so and so. Say in the same way is our Lord in the heavens. He is the King in the heavens and the Lord of the earth. He is the Lord in the oceans and on land and in all places. The narrator said, I came back, went to Abu Shakr and explained to him the answer. He said, so Abu Shakr said, this answer is brought from Al-Hijaz and this narration is also graded as Hassan by Alamatul Majlisi. So let us just analyze, we've read the passage and I apologize for all the reading. Of course, with these episodes, I will try to make them short but it's not always possible. So for anyone who is lazy or they can't be bothered to listen to, let's say, anything over than 15 minutes, they can speed it up on YouTube. But anyway, what we find is that the Imam alayhi salam, Imam Sadiq is using this argument to show Hisham that look, your name, ask this person, what will his name, if he goes to Basra, if he goes to Kufa, if he goes to any of the other cities or lands, what will he be called there? He will be called by the same name. So Imam Sadiq alayhi salam is showing just like you will be called as the same name and are the same person in different places, Allah Azza wa Jal is the God of everything. So when this verse in the Holy Quran, it says, it is God who is the Lord of the heavens and the earth, he is all wise and all knowing. It does not mean this is two separate gods. Rather, when we say Allah Azza wa Jal is the God of the earth, He is God of the heavens, He is God of all things, God of the creations. It means that it is the same God, but that He is the God of all things. It does not mean they are different gods, just like with you and your name, you would say that, okay, I am, for example, Zayd when I go to Iran, I am Zayd when I go to the UK, I am Zayd when I go to America. It doesn't mean you are a different person, rather it is the same person and the same name described in different locations. So Imam Sadiq alayhi salam is asking um, Hisham bin Hakam to go to this person and when he debates him again to go say that, okay, if you go to this land, your name is this, right? You have the same name. When you go to that land, you have the same name. Does it mean you're a different person? No, it means you are the same person. 
So Imam Sadiq refuted them and showed their wrong type of logic. So when Hisham bin Hakam uh, went back and for example, um, he will say the argument that Allah is a Lord of the heavens, he is a Lord of the heavens and the oceans and the land in all places. When Imam Sadiq went back and described this to Abu Shakir at Daysani, he said that this ant answer is brought from Al Hijaz. So the person Abu Shakir at Daysani knew that such an answer that Hisham got was from his teacher, Imam Sadiq. Because as we mentioned in previous episodes, Hisham in the beginning started off with this belief of Tajseem. And later on, he developed his beliefs by going to Imam Sadiq and posing questions to him which he would not be able to answer. So he clearly shows here that he is going to Imam Sadiq presenting these beliefs, getting the answers, and then going back to the opponent, opponents and smashing them with these types of answers. And Abu Shakir ad Daysani knew that this answer came from Imam Sadiq and that such an answer and reply is from the holy household, the Ahlul Bayt السلام, who take their knowledge from the Prophet Muhammad So to sum up, again, this narration refutes the logic that was brought by the atheist who parroted the arguments of Bayan and the beliefs of Bayan, who called the Imams السلام, Allah or called them gods or believed that Imam Zayn al-Abideen was a type of God or God united with him or God united with Imam Ali. And he showed that this verse in the Quran, verse 84 of chapter 43, is talking about the same. The same God is the God of all of the earth and all of the heavens and all of the universe. So this was shown and repeated back to Abu Shakir at Daysani. So again, to sum up, we showed Bayan as an example to show that the Ghulat existed within history. There are many different groups. They did not have all identical beliefs. Rather, we were showing Bayan as, a, as an example who was of someone who was cursed by the Imams and who promoted these beliefs. And it goes back to that clip which brought up this discussion. So when the Mu'ammam referred to Imam Hussein alayhi salam as a type of God, he is repeating these same ghulu types of beliefs as mentioned in the narrations. And such a person should repent he should be condemned for this. And if anyone is able to meet him and discuss this, they should debate him on this point and say that, look, the previous narrations as we showed, the Imam, someone comes to him and says that the people are claiming that you are gods. So you are not allowed to use this, the term Khuda, Allah or God, for other than Allah Azza wa Jal. And if you do so, you will be mir mirroring the beliefs of the Ghulat, you will be copying the beliefs of the Mushrikeen of Quraysh and uh, in the time of the Prophet Muhammad in Mecca when they repeated this that they professed to worship those types of demigods and gave the attributes of Allah to these gods and negated attributes of Allah and said that he is not able to resurrect people, he is not one, he is not able to resurrect as I said and he is not able to hear all of the needs of the people. And again, there's a difference there. If any of the prophets or the awliya or the imams السلام, are able to hear, this is for a process and this is due to the permission of Allah Azza wa Jalla. It's still not comparable to Allah Azza wa Jalla, who is all hearing by his knowledge, by his adhat. Um, or we can say that Allah knows all things that can be heard and does not need any uh, process for this. As Allah is Sami'ul al Adim and no one else can apply this term of Samir to any other person apart from Allah Azza wa Jal. And even the pious prophets or the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam, if we accept that they can hear certain things or when the believers uh, call them or send the salams on them, it's limited. It doesn't mean that they can hear every single type of sound in the world which Allah already knows about and doesn't need to hear or go through a process. So inshallah ta'ala join us in the next episode, dear brothers and sisters, where we will speak about a very misused narration by both the Ghulat and the Nawasib, where the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam or Imam Ali alayhi salam narration I believe is in Al-Khisal, where he says that you can say anything about our merits. How should we understand this particular narration where we speak about the merits of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam? And let's see how people misuse this narration. So we showed the free clips from the Mukhalif polemicist 
uh, we will go on to our next episode discussing this particular narration and inshallah ta'ala we will take more clips from some of the Nasabi channels and speak about these clips and be ready to criticize or condemn them no matter who the speaker is in there if it does not conform to the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as-salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum wa la'an a'adahum.